This tutorial series is brought to you by Polygon. Make better renders faster. Welcome back to the donut project that keeps on giving. Our sprinkles are done and now we're gonna do some texture painting on our donuts because if we were to hide our icing here and we just have a look at our donut in rendered view mode, <coughs> we can see that yeah, it, it, it looks like a donut. It definitely, uh, our brain recognizes it as such, but it's, it looks a little bit fake, a little bit cartoonish. And that is because if you look at real reference photos of donuts, um, you'll see that they're not one solid color, right? They are, you know, a darkish brown color. But as we mentioned, when we talk about sculpting, when it sits in the fat and it's like in the deep fryer and it's floating, the part that is level is getting cooked less. So that part is always a little bit whiter. So it always has this like white ring around the donut. So as always in Blender, there's a hundred ways you could do something. I know I've been reading the comments. People say like, oh, why didn't you do it this way? Why didn't you do it this way? Well, yeah, you can do things any any number of ways. And we could do like a gradient effect right now and that would be short and sweet. In fact, that's how I made my original image. I did that with like a simple gradient. But this is an opportunity to learn a valuable part of Blender, um, which you'll probably wanna use in the future for a project and that is texture painting. So we wanna actually paint on our mesh here. So there is a texture paint feature in Blender. So up here, the top, texture paint, right. Now, uh, to talk about texture painting, you also have to talk about a separate step, um, which we actually don't need to do for our donut in this case, um, and that is UV unwrapping. If you go to the UV editor up here, um, this will show you for your mesh, if you select all your, uh, your vertices of your mesh, it'll show you your UVs. Now UVs are, the best way to understand UVs are <laughs> with this image here of this, this chocolate. It's like if you have a 3D mesh, um, in order for, for paint to be applied to it, you, you, you are actually painting onto a 2D image. So the software has to know how is that 2D image going to wrap around a 3D mesh? And that is what UV unwrapping is. Now, the reason I say we don't need to know it for this step is that our mesh is actually already UV unwrapped because when we added in, we went mesh and we added in torus in part one, um, Blender already UV unwrapped it for us. So it's already pretty well good to go. Now, when we do our coffee cup in the next level, when we model our own coffee cup, we're actually gonna UV unwrap it ourselves then. Um, but for now, it's already UV unwrapped. Um, the reason I do mention this though, is that looking at the squares of our um, of our donut here, like if we, this thing is, drives me up the wall, but the clipping is always way too low. Um, <laughs> the, the squares on our donut are obviously like square shapes, whereas over here they are rectangular, which would mean if we were to paint over here, um, essentially we would get like a stretched image look over there if we were to paint on a square uh, image. However, if we were to start with an image which was rectangular, like stretched like that way, so it was like uh, like that, for example, um, then uh, and don't don't do this. I'm just to, to demonstrate. Um, then then it would appear right. Okay. So, anyways, all this is like a prerequisite to say. Now we go to texture paint mode. The first thing we need to do is define the size of our image here, and this is where we're going to click new at the top, new image. And this is where we're gonna set it up to be a rectangular image. So for the width, I want it to be twice as long as the height. So um, you could get out a calculator and type it in. However, there's a little feature in Blender and that's that you can do math inside any text box. So if I hit star two, that's gonna multiply that value by two. If I hit enter, it's now done the math for us, okay? And then I just need to give this image a name. So I'll call it donut texture tutorial, and then I'm gonna hit okay. And now it has created a rectangular um, image. Okay, now um, you can see that our donut here is purple and our texture is black. And that's because they're not synced. If, if it was synced properly, the donut would be black. In fact, anytime you see purple or pink color in Blender, like usually that means, unless you've set it up yourself, but usually that means that it's missing a texture. So purple or pink, think of that as like a warning sign that Blender is looking for something that it can't find. So this is not good. Now, the reason it's doing that is because it doesn't have any image that we're painting onto in our material over here. 
So you'll remember that we set up the base color for our donut right here to just be one single solid color. So what we wanna do is we wanna swap that out to be an image. So if we went to our shading tab, which you'll remember we went to when we were doing the, uh, the sprinkles, um, right here, we wanna replace this with an image. So I'm gonna add uh, an image node. So go Shift A, and then I'm gonna go Input, nope, I'm gonna go Texture, Image Texture. Okay, so I add this in. And then what I wanna do is take the yellow, this is like a you know short little uh, tip whenever you're working with nodes. Generally speaking, uh, one color only goes into another color. So this, this, this color is obviously gonna go into our base color. Then the image texture, we're gonna select the, the texture that we just created, Donut Texture Tutorial, should be in the dropdown. And there we go. Now, if we go back to our Texture Paint tab, you should see that they would be linked. And if I was to paint over here, just do a quick little across it, you would see that we're now painting on our uh, map over here. And likewise, we can actually paint over on this side as well, and it will paint onto our mesh. And there we go, that's good, awesome. Now, before we uh, go another step, before we start painting, it's a good idea to actually save our image. Because if we were to save our blend file, which by the way, good idea to do that, always get into the habit of doing that. Um, the image actually isn't saved with it. This image right now is stored in kind of like a temporary space. And if you were to quit Blender, you would lose any painting that you've done. So you need to save your image separately to your blend file. So I'm gonna go image, save as. And I would just call this, yeah, PNG, whatever, save it. And there we go. So whenever you see a star next to the image, it means like if I was to do painting here, it means that you haven't saved the image yet. So if you were to quit Blender, you're gonna lose any changes you've done. So a quick shortcut is just Shift S whilst your cursor, <laughs> of course it doesn't work. Oh, maybe it's Alt S, that's it, Alt S. There you go. That's the hotkey for saving the image over here. So you can like quickly do that. Anyways, all right, so. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna give just the base color of my donut. So if I hit the N key, um, let me turn on, make sure that that's turned on so you can see what I'm pressing. N will bring up the, the, the panel here and I'm just gonna set a donut color like this. Now there's a fill tool, but it's gonna collide with the white stuff I've already done here and I don't know how to turn off the continuous thing. Anyways, I'm just gonna paint over the top of it. Um, so let's go strength of one. And hey, why have I got some sort of lazy mouse thing turned on? <laughs> okay, I've got smooth stroke turned on. I guess that was maybe a hotkey that I pushed uh, while I was trying to figure out how to save. I guess that was smooth stroke. I'd never seen that before. Anyways, okay, solid, solid paint over it, okay? Now we wanna do that little white, little white ring around it and gosh, Every area of Blender needs to change the clipping. It's so annoying. Anyways, um, okay, so I'm gonna set um, I'm gonna set the color to white. Now, actually, I, I want to keep my color, my my donut color there. If I hit X, which is the same hotkey as in Photoshop, it'll flip between the two colors in your palette. So that's just handy. So I'm gonna set this one to white, and I want to use a low strength of like 0 0.3, 0 0.2, something like that. Um, because we don't want this white to be like blinding, otherwise it'll look like it's kind of like, you know, just like painted on there really deliberately. So something subtle. Um, and you'll notice we can paint both in the 2D mode and you can paint also on the 3D model. So it'll update both of them interactively. It'll like sync them together. Um, now, one thing to note is that if we continue this around here, because we are drawing with a mouse, um, especially, it's gonna be really, really obvious that it's been painted, right? Um, because it's a continuous stroke. If you've got a stylus, you can use pen pressure and it's like a little bit better. But even, even regardless of that, it helps to use a texture to throw some extra detail in there that you're gonna miss with, uh, with just your brush. So you can use a texture mask. You would think you would use texture by the way, but texture will actually use the color of a texture that you put in there, which isn't what we want. We want to use our original colors here, but we want to add like a stencil effect to it. And that's what Texture Mask does. I only just learned this myself. So anyway, we're clicking on new, new texture. And then um, down here, the very bottom, there's a little texture panel. And then at the top, we want to select from brush, brush mask texture. And then from the type, because the default is set to image, you can put any image in there, but we're gonna use clouds. So this is a procedurally generated texture that comes with Blender. Um, it's probably the most common type of procedural texture you use a lot, basically. Um, so if we um, paint now, you'll see that we get a very faint, um, 
if I just turn this up just so we can see it, you can see we get a texture painted over it now. Um, and you'll note that actually the more you paint, um, it, it sort of covers it up, but it, it still kind of keeps the same like tile to it. So actually what I like to do is change the mapping to random. And then like every time you press it, it'll be like a new kind of rotation of that brush and it'll look a little bit, I don't know, it's just more appropriate for what I want it for. <laughs> um, all right, let's turn down the strength again and let's just do some painting. Also, we can change the size of the brush as well. Sorry, the size of the cloud so that it's a little bit more, yeah, it's a little more varied. Um, but there we go, cool. Right, now one thing to note, by the way, this is like uh, at the seam of the texture. So actually if I was to paint in the 2D space over here, like if I was to paint across there like that, you can see we get a seam. Um, and that's because when you're painting in the 2D space, it won't continue a stroke over to the other side, right? It'll just paste it where you put it. But if you draw on the 3D model, then it will, it'll continue it across that side there. So when you come to like a seam, you just make sure that you are drawing on the 3D space, not the, uh, not the 2D space. Anyway, um, yeah, we just continue around it. This is the sort of thing that could take five, five seconds, five minutes, five hours, depending on how detailed you wanna go. But um, most of it's gonna be covered up with icing. This is just, this is the kind of thing, it's the kind of detail that you'll notice if it's not there. Um, but if it is there, you might not notice it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, uh, it's like when you're watching a movie, right? Nobody notices the audio of a movie unless it's bad, unless they've, that's the only time anyone notices or talks to an audio engineer is when they've done a terrible job. It's kind of the same thing here. It's like, it's, it's something that if it wasn't on the donut, it might look, people will go like, hmm, the donut looks fake and they won't know why. Um, but if it is there, they won't notice it, but they'll just say, looks great. So anyways, um, that's kind of the look we're going for. Because I've got the original donut texture, um, as that thing, if I hit X, then it's kind of like I'm erasing the white parts. So that can be handy as well. Also, um, looking at our reference, uh, why not, since we've got the brush out and everything ready, do some painting to the actual dark parts of the donut? Because it's not a constant color on the donut itself either. Like they were, like might look that way, but the more you do art and the more you do 3D, you'll, have, you'll develop an eye for noticing things. And there's no constant uniform color in the real world pretty much ever. It's just, it just doesn't exist. There's always fluctuations and slight variations, especially for something like this. So um, yeah, I'm gonna use, uh, I'll use my white brush. I'll set this to black though. And um, we could paint like this, but that's just gonna be dark. What I wanna do though, is uh, set it to overlay, the blend type to overlay. And then what it will do is it will kind of retain the original color of the donut. Um, but it'll just make it a little bit darker, a little bit hotter, which is kind of what I want. Now, obviously most of this is gonna be covered up with icing. <laughs> so, uh, you know, don't go overboard spending too long detailing the, uh, the donut that's not even gonna be visible, but a little bit, especially, you know, near, near the front, near the camera. That's where my camera is at the front there. Can definitely come in handy. Oh, also we should probably uh, do some of this around the, uh, oh, also around the base of it as well. We gotta do the inside of the donut. So let's just do a little bit around here. As you can tell, I'm doing this very rough, <laughs> but you know, it's, uh, yeah. It's like, why not, right? It, it, it's the sort of thing, like this is a thing you, you note when you, you do CG a lot is like, there are things that you know could improve something, but it's too much work, right? So. If I didn't have the texture paint tool already open and ready to go, I probably wouldn't bother going to the trouble of painting on the donut. But since it's here and it's already set up, we might as well add the detail because it's gonna help us. Um, anyways, let's flop, swap, floppity flop this around and let's just do some white inside the donut here as well. This is really not gonna be that visible by the camera, but little bits of it will. And uh, just some, that kind of looks like a bagel. <laughs> It actually really, really looks like a bagel, but that's all right. They are quite similar, I guess. Um, all right, so that is gonna do it for the texture. That's probably fine as it is. Um, yeah, just erase some of this that's looking a little too hot, a little too white, but that's good. So make sure you save your image when you are finished. Image save, it's done. And now if we go to layout mode, let's bring back our icing. 
And let's have a look at this. Or actually, you know, turn off the icing. That's probably, yeah. Um, there you go. You should be able to see the texture now painted onto your donut. And uh, if you don't, make sure that your shading, inside your shading settings, you do have the correct image, the, the same one that you painted on and you saved is going into your base color. Um, and by the way, you probably know that like, you know, we put this into the base color, but now that you understand it, you could probably understand we can also paint onto the roughness uh, uh, input. We could just by doing a separate texture paint and putting that into the roughness, um, or we could paint onto other other properties of it. So. This is just, you know, base, base painting, but you can paint and create a really layered material. Um, that's the kind of thing that substance paint is typically good at because it can do color and roughness and all those things in the same brush setting and you can create really interesting things. But anyways, uh, that's gonna do it for our texture paint. So go ahead, click here, and in the next part, we're gonna be adding displacement and procedural texture to the donor and push the realism even further. So I will see you in that video.